Mayweather has seemed to land virtually every punch he wanted to. And Mayweather is badly hurt by the low blow. Boom! Big right hand for Taylor. Left hand lands for right. Any man who comes in that ring has my respect. They continue to work that eye. And Joe Cortez says, that's it. Mosley beating Vargas to the punch mercilessly. Failure is not an option for me at all. Boom! That's what heavyweights are supposed to do. Oh, that right hand should do it. Brilliant. Palua closed the show. Herrera trying to resurrect the old magic. They trade shots to end the round. Oh, my God. Another big okay. shot. And this time, Arturo Gatti is absolutely ruined. Boxing gets a great, shot in the arm. This is my home, my heart, my life my dreams. It all started here. And now, HBO Sports presents Boxing's Best of 2006. of HBO Sports. Again, I'm Jim Lampley, and welcome to this edition of Boxing's Best, on which we look back at one of the sport's biggest moments from 2006. As Oscar De La Hoya prepared for his May 6th showdown with Nicaragua's Ricardo Mayorga, the golden boy no longer looked totally golden in the ring. He was coming off two years of inactivity in the wake of a knockout loss to Bernard Hopkins and what many saw as a gift decision over Felix Sturm. He had succeeded so mightily in his new incarnation as a promoter that many questioned whether the necessary hunger to fight could still be accessed. And he was going in against one of the most palpably violent fighters in boxing, an unbridled force of nature who treated De La Hoya's lordly status as a joke in pre-fight promotions, going so far as to insult Oscar's sexuality and to make lewd comments about Oscar's wife, Millie Karecha. So the golden boy was back. Or was he just fooling himself? That was the question that hung over the fight. Let's go back to May 6 in Las Vegas to see how I called it with Emmanuel Stewart and Larry Merchant. <laughs> Deloya starts with a jab to the body. Mayorga tries the right hand upstairs and throws a, a roundhouse left hook. Mayorga throwing big shots from the outside, or from the get-go, that's the way it works. Deloya cracks him with a left hook. Mayorga hits him with a right cross on the top of the head. And two more shots on the very top of De La Hoya's skull. De La Hoya determined to make Mayorga know that he's a price to pay for coming in. He's hit him some clean shots. He looks very calm and relaxed. Hit him with a clean left hook and an excellent body shot that backed him off a moment ago. I think Oscar's fighting exactly as I expected. Not doing a lot of running around. He's trying to fight by going in close and knowing that May Ayorga has to have a lot of loop room. He's going to try to beat him with short punches. All right. Perfect left hook. That's my yeah. A right cross followed by a sensational yeah. left hook. And so yeah. much for the notion that Galloway didn't have the power yeah. to knock yeah. Ayorga down. Okay. That was a perfect shot. Yeah. Short he was part. born with that left hook, Manuel. It yeah. came right out of the crater. Yeah. Another left hook lands there. Mayorga's okay now. Ma no, Mayorga's punches are just, he can't see those short. Ox is going to beat him with those short, accurate punches. Manny, we're only one minute in. Stop! Stop! Well, so much for talking the talk. What a thrill for the Delaware fans in the audience. After all the buildup, 
A perfect left hook shot and a knockdown in round one. That's the left hook he threw against Vargas in the tenth. Oscar's got a real strange left hook. It doesn't look that much, but it's very effective, particularly when he punches when he leaps on his toes. It's always been his most effective puncher. Yeah. It lands again. Two more shots to the body, and Mayorga just grabs him and pulls him to the ropes. It's an amateur and a professional. Where's the 20 month layoff? Where's all the ring rust? Deloy has seldom looked better than this. Sensational first round performance. He clocks Mayorga with a right hand. But Mayorga is very, very strong and dangerous. Very strong. He just doesn't have the skills out of coordination. Deloy blocks that with his gloves. He's blocked many of Mayorga's wild shots with his gloves yeah, here yeah. in the first round. My youngest punches are very wide. He cannot put short punches, and Oscar's using that to try to get close and fight him very similar to Trinidad. Well, already the reckless aggression that Mayorga usually throws has been tempered. Well, I read some excited talk about how viciously Mayorga attacks the heavy bag. Notice to Mayorga's corner. The heavy bag doesn't hit The heavy back. bag doesn't punch back. Absolutely right. Big round for Delaware. Right here, you see Oscar led a very short punch right here because Mayorga has to have too much loop room, and Oscar just such a much more accurate pinpoint puncher. Maybe Mayorga should have left the sleeping prince sleep instead of waking him up with all of that vituperation. Copy box numbers in round one. Mayweather 10 out of 6, or check it, Mayorga 10 out of 65, Beloya 15 out of 41, and of course the huge left hook produced the knockdown. I had the Mayweather Freudian slip because across the ring I saw Floyd Mayweather Jr. Very excited about what he saw yeah. Deloia do. Yeah, I, I, Oscar's going to go after him now. The short left hook for Tinker's going to be his I think his real ticket. Well, you heard Floyd Mayweather Sr. saying you can knock him out right now if you focus on your jab. But Oscar's not jabbing enough. He should jab a lot. Good instruction, but he's not following his coach's instructions. There he shoots there the jab twice. And he's jabbing, jabbing at Mayorga's eye, which is very smart. He's not jabbing, though. He's jabbing he at his eye. He jabbed him again. He's beating yeah. him to the punch. Now that he's unleashed the jab, he's starting to see the results Mayweather suggested would come. Yeah. He keeps jabbing in his eye. He obstructs his vision, and then when he lands a big shot, he'll never see it. Mayorga got in a couple of good shots, including a left hook. The right hand is blocked. When he loops them from over the top, yeah. Oscar can see them coming. I think Oscar's fighting a really smart fight to the way he's fighting. Blocking him, making him throw all those wide punches to the outside. Oscar's picked off every one of these shots with his gloves. That yes. one just missed. Now he yeah. gets in a right hand, does Mayorga, chopping over the top. Yesterday, incidentally, I'm standing straighter up than ever before in my career, and therefore I'm seeing punches better. He has a beautiful left jab, though. If he needs to work that jab, he will set up a lot of things more. There it is. He sets up the jab, and then when the big shots come, you never see it. Well, of course, that great left hook in the first round was set up by a perfect right cross. Here's the right cross again, and he tries to follow with the cleanup left hook just short. This is a technical mismatch so far. As much
much as it was a technical mismatch with Trinidad, this is even more yeah. so. And this is why Oscar picked him. Not so much for the bad mouth and that he would do what helped publicity because he could see that the guy was technically an amateur fighter. But it's an amateur fighter who beat a very good fighter in Vernon Forrest twice. But Let's they, remember that. Yeah, but his whole claim to fame is basically off of that one fighter. Well, yeah. but that was a pretty good fighter. You go over here and you get a man hurt in the corner, and you ain't doing nothing. Fire back, man, when you get a guy hurt like that, man. Keep firing. That man could have been out of there, man. That's it. I'm in mean, jab. Huh? Fifty ain't enough jab, man. Here you see Oscar shoot those little short straight right hands, which Mayorga has no defense for because he cannot throw punches short and accurate like that. Delaware is making money with the right hand tonight, as he did against Vargas in a similar style matchup. Right hand. Only vaguely right similar because, frankly, Vargas is a much better boxer with much better technique than Ricardo Mayorga. Round two, Delaware landed 14 out of 22 jabs, 23 of 39 punches overall. 23 out of 39. How long will Mayorga hold up against that? It's been reported to me by people who might know that Ricardo Mayorga smoked a cigarette in the limousine on the way to the arena tonight. Well, after this fight, he can smoke all he wants and drink all he wants, too. He can do what he wants after the night. trying to get in a body shot. Basically, when you see Mayorga throw punches, you see his feet come apart and splay, and, and he just, he's so ragged in there. He has no proper coordination at all between hands and feet. And Delaware is finding all the empty spots. That was a chopping right hand that connected to the side of Delaware's face. Oscar careful enough not to just be constantly throwing the jab. But if he could have seen the copy box numbers from round two, he might throw it all the time. Jab, jab, jab. Right hand a little short. Mayorga's punch count is dropping. Now he throws three punches and takes a left hook to the body. Gets brutally clipped, clocked with an uppercut. Perfect shot. Don't see Oscar throw the uppercut all that often, but my goodness, look at the target. There's a welt yeah. under the right eye of Mayorga. It, it's interesting. Oscar is almost fighting at a, a, the same type fight that Felix Trinidad fought. Well, it's clear he watched that fight. Yeah, he's not backing back, giving them room to land those lunkers, but moving them to the inside and punching with short punches. Virtually any real pro would choose this plan, though. This is what you should do against a guy who throws wild like my arc. Oscar is making my work. Good shot. Oh, uppercut landed flush and snapped Delaware's head back. Best punch of the fight for Mayorga. Oscar, Oscar better start jabbing more. He's letting the guy get set. He's, good. he's a beautiful golden left hand, and he's not using it. I'm sure that Floyd Mayweather Sr. is going to be even more assertive about that point after this round because he got hit with the uppercut, and he, he might hurt. not need to get hit like that if he keeps jabbing. There, there you go. Keep working the jab. That's the ticket. Almost landed a big left hook at the end of the round. Mayorga got in a couple of shots. Give me, give me some water. Come up here. Come here, come here. Listen, Jackie. Deep breath. Listen, tell me to slow down, okay? 
Tell Peter to slow down. Okay? Tell him to keep his hands up, okay? Deep breath. Hold, hold, hold. Tell him deep breath, okay? Keep using the jab, okay? He got to take everything later around. Here you see Oscar laying a beautiful left uppercut. And once you right here, you see Mayorga laying a right uppercut. Because Oscar was anticipating the punch coming over top like most of Mayorga's overhand rights, and he bent down slightly just enough to move into an uppercut that came from underneath. In oh, round three, CompuBox saw a 13 to 6 edge for Mayorga in Power Connect. Deloya clearly had the cleaner, more spectacular shots, except for that big uppercut. Harold, how do you have it through three? Okay, Jim. I thought Oscar won the third round. 30 to 26, three rounds to nothing. Oscar De La Hoya. Jim, you gotta give him an extra point in round one for knocking him off his feet. That was a 10-8 round. Oscar De La Hoya, very, very sharp. Beautiful left jab, beautiful straight right hand. He's won all three rounds. Three to nothing. And he gets in another right cross and a left hand. Mayorga got in the shot in between. Two beautiful body punches from De La Hoya. And those body punches are designed to take away Mayorga's power. Yeah, Oscar needs to keep busy. He cannot let this guy get set. He still needs to work his jab a little bit more. Well, if he's not doing it enough, could that be the ring rust that we were supposed to be looking yeah, for? Yeah, well, I definitely see ring rust. I, I, I'm, I'm not impressed with him as far as being sharp to get a move for this. I see the ring rust. Well, I, I'm, but, I'm going to demur here. He's, not, he's found a way to dominate his opponent without doing that or not doing it as much as you'd like. But, but he's got a pretty good formula going so far. disadvantage for Mayorga in terms of dealing with judges it's a lot easier to see when you've blocked a long looping punch with your gloves than if you block the short punch inside with your gloves right so when Deloya blocks a punch we know <laughs> jab jab Mayorga moves away now Mayorga jabbing twice body shot by Mayorga two left kicks the body by Deloya and a right, and a third, he missed up six. When they get in those exchanges, Mayorga has his right hand so low that he's uh, just so vulnerable to get hit with left hooks. Oscar's finding several ways to set up his left hook. Well, all you do is get close to Mayorga. He tells both hook. fighters not to hit on the back of the head. Hard right hand lands for Mayorga. In his corner, they told Mayorga, you're going to get him in the later rounds. Uh, they're hoping that De La Hoya fades. But De La Hoya looks so relaxed in this fight that I don't know that it's going to affect his conditioning. De La Hoya blocks punches with his gloves. Mayorga blocks them with his head. As you know, if you follow the sport, there's considerable speculation about the possibility if Oscar De La Hoya succeeds tonight of a mega fight in September between De La Hoya and the world number one pound for pound fighter Floyd Mayweather Jr. When De La Hoya knocked Mayorga down in the first round, Floyd Jr. leaped out of his seat in ecstasy. He's thinking eight figures. Yeah, it would be a big, big, big fight. And I respect his father for saying that he didn't want a part of it. Three minutes left. Let's okay. do it one more time. Okay. 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 You right. saw the copy box numbers that showed Deloya landing 46% of his punches. That's a brilliant percentage. Larry. Mayorga said he would win because he beat Forrest, who beat Mosley, who beat Delahoya. He's finding out that uh, that isn't the way it works. <laughs> oh, 
Well, one thing that's been said about Mayorga's conquests of Forrest in retrospect, you know, a lot of people say, well, Forrest is a, a left jab, right cross fighter, very similar to Oscar De La Hoya. And now the... No, 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 no. You're okay. The two no fighters cut. banged heads. No now Mayorga has something new to be angry about. But uh, a lot of people say, looking back, Forrest was compromised with his left shoulder at that time, injured, and didn't have the kind of strong, assertive jab that you need to keep Mayorga off of you. I just pressure myself, don't put that much emphasis on uh, the fight really more with Vernon because it hasn't been that much consistency. And, and even the rematch, I mean, he, he won it, but it was not that super impressive. It was a very close decision. Yeah, a lot yeah. of people thought Vernon could have gotten it. Delaware lands two brilliant left hooks. Yeah. Brilliant inside left hooks while Mayorga was punching over him. Mayorga, this is great combination punching. Mayorga's right hand is so low that it's very easy to hit him with the left hooks. That was Trinidad's best punch, and it's Oscar's best punch. Oscar, for the most part, has made Mayorga fight his fight rather than Mayorga trying to ma do, uh, make Oscar fight his fight. Well, it's hard to make the other guy fight your fight when you're getting hit with his left hook repeatedly. Mm -hmm. Eloia, very economical in his punch output. Maybe not throwing as many punches as Floyd Mayweather Sr. would like to see him throw, but landing an extraordinarily high percentage of the punches that he does throw, like that. Fighting Mayorga requires that you go into the blades of a helicopter. But once you get there, the body of the chopper is sitting still. But Oscar has not been landing clean punches as much as he was earlier, even though he's shooting them at a close distance for whatever reason Mayorga is well, because feeling, Mayor, he's feeling Mayorga them now. is not attacking him the way he was before because of the fact that he caught so many punches. Brilliant jab by De La Hoya snaps Mayorga's head back. He does it again. Just misses with the uppercut. Oscar showing a multiplicity of punches here tonight that we haven't seen from him in some previous fights. And the left hook just keeps on coming. Straight right hand, bang! Left hook, bang! Well, people wanted to know if Oscar had become a better promoter than a fighter. So far, he's provided a very clear answer to that question. Jane 80, warning Mayorga for the second time for hitting Delaware on the back of the head. It was a given that it was going to happen. It's Mayorga's favorite foul. <laughs> hey, Jay! 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 He took his head like that, Jay! Listen! Listen! The little green. Deep breath. Oh, little green one. Tony Hollis, I'm right there. Tell him to keep his hands up. Yeah, he turned it, but he turned his head like that, Jay! You can't hit him when you know this right. Okay, don't hit him behind the head no more. Tell him. No. You got, you got him good now, man. Keep you backing him up. Anytime you got a man that don't back up, back him up, he in trouble. So you all you do, keep on him hitting his body here and head, all right? You hear what Floyd Mayweather just said. Anytime you back up a fighter who wants to fight coming forward, you got him in trouble. I and think that's round, good advice. And in round five, Delaware had a 16 to 7 edge in Power Connect, according to CompuBox. He also landed 10 of 23 jabs. It was another brilliant round for Delaware. But to me, it seems, aside from the jab, a lot of those exciting punches are not really landing that cleanly on Mayaga like they used to be. If he's landing the jabs, a lot of the punches, he's barely missing them. I think that's again because he's got Mayorga backing up. Exactly. More yeah. defensive. No. Mayorga's much more conscious of trying to get away uh, from Delaware's punches. Delaware got his respect in the first round. Well, maybe he just got into the rhythm of Oscar's punches or whatever it was, but I, I, I'm looking at it. He's not getting hit that clean anymore. Almost landed another blow to the back of Delaware's head. Now there's a straight right hand shot that landed on Delaware's forehead. Delaware with a four punch combination to the body. Two 
Jumps out to upstairs. Down goes my arm again. Second knockdown of the fight. And for the first moment of the fight, there's a look of discouragement on Club Nyorga's yeah. face. I think he's pretty much given up now. I think he knows he can't deal yeah. with the hand yeah. speed. Yeah. 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 Oscar De La Hoya has more hand speed than Ricardo Nyorga, and he's proving it face to face. I was one of the many who did not think a knockout for De La Hoya was possible here. And it's right over. Right it's now, it's he's all knockout. over. This fight is over. A great performance by Oscar De La Hoya. And as I've said before, Jim, when a popular fighter who's had problems comes back with a great performance, it's all the problems have gone away. Look at the smile and <laughs> listen to the crowd. Boxing gets a great, shot in the Great, great And he will fight again. Oh, yes, he oh, will. yes, he's about again. <laughs> a tremendous performance. And for the 33-year-old golden boy. And once again, <laughs> the bully, when somebody stands up to him, goes down. Three knockdowns in the fight. And on the third of the three, referee Jay Nady simply said, that's that. No, great, great finish. Oscar knows how to finish out. When he gets your head, he doesn't load up on any one punch. He just throws punches in profusion enough where the head goes back. Well, that was reminiscent of the 12th right. round rally against Quarte. That was reminiscent of how he knocked out Vargas, Vargas in yes. the 11th round. You get him against the ropes and just let go. Yeah. And now Mayorga is trying to be a gentleman, no doubt, after all the garbage of the last eight weeks. Let's take a look at the two knockdowns in this round, Emmanuel. Yeah. This is a hand speed yeah, display. Short punches, short punches. My bad, so Mayorga tried to get one punch off. Oscar can get three punches off, because Mayorga had to swing. Same thing here again. Short punches, short punches. Well, again, I did not think a knockout was possible for De La Hoya here. He gets the knockout in the sixth round. He gets it, incidentally, two rounds earlier than Trinidad. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm somewhat surprised myself. And this is the end of the fight. This is what prompted Jay Nady to say, enough, enough, as De Hoya landed just enough of these punches. Just enough, not trying just to Just enough of the punches punch. by throwing straight, by continuing to throw them straight. He got enough leather on Mayorga to convince Jay Nady. Again, this is what he did to Quarte in the 12th. This is what he did to Vargas in the 11th. This is what Oscar De La Hoya does when he thinks he smells knockout. Oscar's one of the best finishers in the game. You very seldom see him get a guy seriously hurt and the guy gets off the hook. What a show. What a show by the sport's biggest attraction. Well, he is back, and we will be seeing him in September. 20 months without it. Boxing needed that. All right, let's go to Michael Buffer now for the official particulars on the Oscar De La Hoya win. Ladies and gentlemen, from the MGM Grand of Las Vegas, referee Jay Nady steps in and calls a halt to this bout. The official time, one minute, 25 seconds of round number six. The winner by knockout victory, and now the new WBC Super Welterweight Champion of the World, the fighting pride of East LA, the Golden Boy, Oscar De La Hoya. And now Larry Merchant is standing by with the president of Golden Boy Promotions. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jim. Congratulations, Oscar. Where did this stand on the spectrum of all of your victories in boxing? You know, it's got to be ranked up there like top, top four, top five. Um, the fact that he was talking so much, the fact that he, uh, I mean, he even talked about my wife. He talked about little Oscar Gabriel and so, it had a lot to do with it. In what way? It just, he motivated me so much. I mean, there was a plan behind picking my orga like five months ago. 
and being what the plan was? The plan was that he was gonna talk bad about me, insult me, and he was gonna motivate me. And I needed that. I needed that. I haven't felt that since I fought Vargas. What about his wild style? Was that a plan all along you felt you could pick apart as a true professional? Well, actually, we, um, in the gym, we were, we've been working all along, all every year for the last, like, three, four years that I've been with Mayweather. That defense, we're blocking the punches, blocking, coming back. I think it finally kicked in. It finally kicked in, but this guy was perfect because he was throwing wild punches. I was blocking. The jab was like if I was hitting him with a right hand, he felt the power. Let's if we can uh, run some of the knockdowns back. The first round, you sent a message to him. Did he change after that? The message was that I'm going to stand up to the bully. And when he felt that I was in boxing or on my toes or moving my feet a lot around the ring, then I think he sensed that this is serious business. And then instead of him attacking you recklessly as he likes to do, suddenly he was fighting your fight? Well, uh, he tried. He tried to fight uh, recklessly, lunging in with punches, but I stood my ground. And that showed the bully, hey, you're not pushing me back. I'm gonna use my, my effective jab and uh, com fast combinations. And I knew I had some power to knock him out. So in the first minute of the fight, if there was any ring rust, it flew off. <laughs> exactly. I mean, Mayweather, my brother, were telling me all along, stay on your toes, stay on your toes, use your jab, feel him out the first round. But no, I, I think I already had my plan up in my head. <laughs> did you, did he, was there any talking during the fight? Um, his, his reactions to the punches that I threw at him, he would, he would squinch, he would, uh, whatever that word means, but you know, you know what I mean. He, uh, he would go like that with his face. <laughs> um, what, about after the, what about after the fight? What did he say to you? I actually went up to him and I told him, look, the professional that I am, the fighter that I am, the man that I am, I, I forgive you for everything that you said. Um, and I'm sure people will forgive you for what you said. And he gave me his props. He, uh, especially when I stood in front of him, he said, hey, you have what it takes. Let's look forward for a moment. You've said two different things. One, if you had a great night, maybe that would be it, that you would walk out of this ring tonight satisfied that the, the ghost of the fight with Bernard Hopkins had been erased and that this is how you would want to be remembered. You've also said you wanted another fight, perhaps a mega fight in the fall. Where are you now? Uh, we'll have to wait and see. I mean, uh, a lot of emotions are running through my head. Like every other fighter, you ask them uh, 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 right after the fight, one week after the fight, they're still, they're not really thinking, and it includes me. Um, I'll have to wait and think. I'll have to wait and see and, uh, and just uh, let everything go by, let a few days go by, and then I'll think about it. Your trainer, Floyd Mayweather Sr., has made it clear that he would discourage you or have no part in you fighting Floyd Mayweather Jr. What is your reaction to that? Well, um, I respect Floyd Mayweather Sr. and um, um, whatever he tells me because he's my trainer and he trains me uh, to be at my best all the time. And I, I really appreciate everything he does for me. So um, I'll have to sit down and talk with him. I'll sit down with my people, especially my wife, and especially with myself alone and think about all, all the scenarios. Think about the whole situation. Okay, I have this guy, this guy, or that guy. Uh, where can I get more glory? Fighting what guy? That's what I have to think. Uh, or is it worth it? So we'll have to go back to the drawing board and see what happens. Pretty good drawing board you're going back to. Thank you. Thank you very much, Thank Oscar. In the wake of De La Hoya's stirring victory, Mayorga tested positive for the banned diuretic Lasix, a mark of the chances the Nicaraguan fighter was willing to take to earn a paycheck that big. De La Hoya began testing the waters for a potential fight with pound-for-pound pound number one Floyd Mayweather, a fight which is now scheduled for May 5 of next year and could conceivably be a big element a year from now in boxing's best of 2007. Now let's take a look at a compendium of the sport's most memorable moments from the past year. From the welcome resurgence of some familiar names to the sudden emergence of brand new ones. From the ups and downs of boxing's best to the changing face of boxing's biggest. Fighters from across the landscape grabbed the spotlight in a variety of ways and made boxing as dynamic as ever in 2006. Perfect left hook, Dex Mayorga. A right cross, followed 
by a sensational left hook. In May, Oscar De La Hoya made his electrifying return. Where's the 20-month layoff? Where's all the ring rust? De La Hoya seldom looks better than this. Ricardo Mayorga was the perfect opponent for him. Perfect foil, everything was perfect. He's got the knockout! A brilliant show! 41-year-old Bernard Hopkins turned in a vintage performance of his own when he dominated light heavyweight king Antonio Tarver, while Shane Mosley put an exclamation point on his two-fight rivalry with Fernando Vargas. Shane hasn't looked that good in a long, long time. The biggest surprise of 2006 was the sudden rise of journeyman Carlos Valdemir. The story began with his upset of welterweight champion Zab Judah. He went out there against Zab Judah, and he said, you know what, I don't care that you're quicker, I don't care that you're a better boxer, I want this more, and I'm going to prove it. Six months later against Arturo Gatti, his statement was even bolder. This time, Arturo Gatti is ruined, absolutely ruined, by a Valdemir left hook. Gatti was the most exciting fighter of his generation. That title now belongs to Filipino sensation Manny Pacquiao. The crowd chants, and he almost knocks Morales down with the left. In January, Pacquiao avenged his 2005 loss to Mexican icon Eric Morales. It was like somebody was going at 80 miles an hour. The other guy was at 50. Manny Pacquiao has knocked out the great Eric Morales. Ten months later, Pacquiao needed fewer than nine minutes to do it again. Hard right hand, Doug oh, Morales. Pacquiao's all over it. Got a chance. Morales slightly staggered after that last left hand. And down he goes. And the brave heart of Morales holds up, but his legs go again. Third knockdown of the fight by Pacquiao against Morales. He doesn't run again. Morales takes his head as if to say, I want no more. And he Pacquiao has the knockout. At times when you need to know when you're beaten, and I think I was a beaten man tonight. 168-pound champion Joe Calzaki also joined boxing's elite thanks to his 12-round masterpiece against Jeff Lacey. Calzaghi's schooling of Lacey, flunking of Lacey, was a magnificent performance by a veteran boxer. More competitive was the showdown between middleweight King Jermaine Taylor and pound-for-pound -pound stalwart Winky Wright. Winky Wright seemed perfectly willing to trade with younger, bigger, supposedly stronger Jermaine Taylor. Every single round, even if you gave it to one guy or the other, was a close round. I've never seen Winky Wright's face look like this, and I haven't seen Taylor's face look like this either. You gotta fight with your fucking heart now, let's go. And this minute may decide whether Jermaine Taylor can hold on to the middleweight championship or whether Winky Wright's gonna take it away. This bout is a draw. Jermaine Taylor retains his middleweight championship. If he wanted the title so bad, he should have fought all, all 12 rounds, because that's what I would have did. I showed everybody that I'm the champ. For the fans, so who won that fight? Floyd Mayweather, arguably the game's greatest talent, faced a turbulent start in 2006. Oh, there's a low blow by And now Leonard Ellerbee wants Joel Judah. And a riot is going to break out in the ring. A 10th round melee marred his April win over Zab Judah. Law enforcement authorities in the ring to try to break it up. Bunch of hotheads in there. There was Mayweather coolly in the corner, just like looking at the whole situation and said, OK, this is going to end. We're still going to fight. And he was ready. He was ready to complete the demolition of Zab Judah. Mayweather returned in November and put an end to Carlos Baldemir's magical run in 12 one-sided rounds. This round has been a showcase for Floyd Mayweather's brilliant straight right hand. With the victory, the pretty boy positions himself for a super fight with boxing's golden boy in 2007. For boxing's glamour division, 2006 was a year of transition. His legs are gone, and that's it! It's over! It is over! He's won the fight! Olek Mastaev has another knockout of her.
Let's see him rock by. Three of four heavyweight title belts now belong to fighters from former Soviet republics, a group which includes seven foot, 320 pound Russian Nikolai Valuev. 22 guns, Barrett is outgunned and in jeopardy against the big man. The year's most impressive heavyweight, however, was Ukrainian star Vladimir Klitschko, who challenged American title holder Chris Bird in April. Bird's in big trouble. Got hit with a massive left hook. Another left hook. Another right hand. Bird hasn't fired back yet. That was the longest reigning heavyweight champion amongst the various belt holders, and Klitschko just tore him apart. He followed that up with a devastating KO of Galvin Brock. In the seventh round. When you knock out somebody, you're doing what a heavyweight's supposed to do. Klitschko dreams of becoming the true heavyweight champion, a feat twice accomplished by the late Floyd Patterson, a beacon of both class and dignity in and out of the ring. This year, boxing also said goodbye to Trevor Burbick, who is forever linked with the end of one iconic career and the beginning of another. While former featherweight champion Willie Pep who notched 229 victories over the span of 26 years, forever remains one of boxing's all-time greats. Today's best strive to achieve such lasting significance. While their futures aren't certain, this much is clear. The stories of 2006 emerged from the many sides of the sport. Thanks to the fighters who demanded our undivided attention and the moments which brought boxing to life. Tune in tomorrow night for a special edition of Boxing's Best, two fights in one show. Manny Pacquiao's second and third fights with Eric Morales, which bracketed the year in January and November. It's a chance to watch the continued emergence of Pacquiao, the Filipino destroyer who may now be the sport's most exciting performer. I'm Jim Lampley. Thanks for being with us on this edition of Boxing's Best. We kick off the new year in the ring on January 20 as Ricky Hatton challenges Juan Urango for his 140-pound title belt, live on World Championship Boxing. This has been a presentation of HBO Sports. A new year and a new era in boxing. We live the most anticipated fights of 2006 over three consecutive nights and see the men who fought from the heart. On December 25th, Jermaine Taylor and Winky Wright battle for middleweight supremacy. Boom! Big right hand for Taylor! December 26th, Golden Boy Oscar De La Hoya returns with a vengeance against Nicaraguan slugger Ricardo Mayorga. And December 27th, witness the pride of the Philippines' Manny Pacquiao as he jewels the heroic Eric Morales in two tremendous bouts. Four epic fights, three epic nights. Ring in the new year with boxing's best of 2006. Because this is the place for champions. Morales versus Pacquiao 2 and Pacquiao versus Morales 3 tomorrow at 11. Next on HBO. Go behind the scenes of the upcoming international thriller starring Leonardo DiCaprio and Jennifer Connelly. HBO First Look, Blood Diamond. Next on HBO. No! Kelly Clarkson! Best movies of 2006, all day, New Year's Day. Monday starting at 8.45. Then the best are back on Saturday night starting with Munich, January 6th at 8.
it's about two African men whose fates become inexorably intertwined. It is about these two men that set off on this journey, one with the intent of getting out of the continent, the other with the intent of sort of getting his family back together. Blood Diamonds is a really gripping, moving story, intellectually, politically, and also emotionally. I'm a fisherman in a story uh, whose family was torn apart by the rebels. Jesse! <laughs> and so he was obviously um, taken hostage to cultivate the mines. Give it to me. After the mine was raided by soldiers, he was taken to prison, and so that's where Archer first heard. I go give one thousand dollars to the man who cuts the diamond out of this bastard. You devils have taken my family, my home, and they lost everything. We meet Archer, and he's selling um, arms.